Well, as Carly was saying, it's going to be another hot one today, the next several days as we head into the Labor Day weekend. Joining us now to talk more about the heat, ABC 10 medical expert, Dr. Tom Hopkins. Tom, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. So assuming each day is going to be hotter than the next, what can people do right now, assuming that tomorrow and the next day are going to be not comfortable at all? Well, while it's very basic, they need to plan their day where they don't have to be out in the heat. And as Carly said, and which is very, very important, is really stay hydrated. It's about being prepared of that hydration. Start now. Start early if you're going to be out there. So the number one thing is prevention is the key, as I've always said, is avoid this, avoid the exposure. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you are going to go out there, you're going to have to make sure you avoid the heat. Um, you remember that the heat exposure, heat exhaustion is a continuum. And the worst of that is heat stroke. And the people who are really are kids and the elderly. Right. So it's important to stay out of that environment. And if you do go out of there, put some shade and make sure that you're well. And limit the time that you, as well. And dress cool and comfortably yeah. all throughout the weekend. So what's the first sign you may be dehydrated or maybe there's a potential heat stroke issue? How do you self-diagnose self on that? <laughs> Great question. It's all on a continuum. Really, if you start feeling get really tired, you know, a little lethargic, if you start having some nausea, or if you're having vomiting, those are when you really are passing to an extreme situation of heat stroke. So heat exhaustion is just the, the fatigue. Pay attention. If you go out in the heat and you start to sweat, that's a body's way to cool the body. That's a good sign. But when you stop doing that, mm -hmm. when you stop sweating, you become more tired and then you have changes in cognition. Maybe you feel that you can't concentrate. And then where you feel any nausea or vomiting, when you get those feelings where they're happening at things, brain changes, nausea, vomiting, oh, then you're into more of the risk for heat stroke, which can be very, very uh, serious and deadly. Okay, for those symptoms, is that a situation where you need to go to the ER and not just lay down and wait, wait for this to pass? Absolutely. If you're having nausea, vomiting, and you're having cognitive changes, you need to get to the hospital because that is a sign of dehy dehydration and potentially significant organ damage, damage to the brain, damage to your circulatory system. So you really need to be treated where you're hydrated and also cooled, where the body mm -hmm. is cooled. Mm -hmm. Because if the body gets to a certain temperature and beyond what you may just feel outside, then you're in the danger zone. So uh, I come home after working out, maybe you and I played tennis or something, um, and I'm yeah. feeling a little dizzy. Do I do water, Gatorade, lie down, cold compress? What do I do? Uh, well, you do all of them. You, first of all, you get out of that heat environment. You make sure you're hydrate. If you're going to do that activity, you and I would be playing tennis or whatever. We should be hydrating all throughout. But really, you're actually behind the eight ball. So you really need to rehydrate. Uh, replenish with electrolytes. Gatorade's an option as well. Anything that has a little bit more electrolytes, start doing that. Get in a cool, comfortable uh, uh, area on the AC, uh, you know, cooling blankets, that kind of thing, just to get yourself comfortable. But remember, if you don't, that doesn't work, and you're nauseated, your cognition is changing, um, those are the things that where you really need to treat it as an emergency mm -hmm. and get to the emergency room. All right, Dr. Tom, thank you. I know you're in between patients. We do appreciate you, and uh, we'll visit again. All right, Dr. Tom yeah. Hopkins.